Hi everyone. You know, I thought it would be interesting to look at some old game strategy guides. Go down a bit of memory lane and just to give my thoughts on the guide and my thoughts on the games and stuff. Just to talk through stuff as I go through. So the one that I'm doing today is Final Fantasy Origins, the official strategy guide. So Final Fantasy 1 and 2. This is for the uh, the PS1 version that was released um, back in 2003. And I actually got this on day one uh, when it first came out in the UK. It was, my goodness, it's it's one of those games that uh, it's, become pretty, it's become pretty rare and pretty hard to find. And it fetches a pretty penny. Um, but I was really... I'd really gotten into Final Fantasy around 2000 and the, like 2001 and then it was shortly after that that they started bringing out the older games on the PS1 so 4, 5 and 6 I got those and then it, I remember it was Red Nose Day in 2003 uh, sometime in March I forget the exact date but it was Red Nose Day it was was it Red Nose Day I'm sure it was Red Nose Day um, 2003 in March and I've played a few variations of these games and in my opinion the PS1 versions are the best because whilst they've definitely got the advancements from the first game um, like they've got the graphical upgrade and the audio uh, sound upgrade obviously because they're 8-bit systems and all that and so eventually when they came to this they came with all those like upgrades uh, like visual and visual and audio and all that um but the one since then uh, i've not played the pixel of master but the like the ps the game boy advanced version and the in the psp version they just they just sort of um took away a lot of what made it special a lot of things that people would say was oh it's for you know quality of life stuff like you can save i think you can just you can save anywhere and and in one you've got like loads of mp Whereas it's a much more finite resource. Um, but, you know, like things like having to use tents to save and all that, it really does make you need to manage your resources. But anyway, let's actually go into the guide. So we've actually... Um, I, I quite, well, I'll tell you what I do like. I like the way that they've got a clear, like, thematic divide here where... They've got these different colors, the, the blue and the pink, which represent the different games. Um, and even though it follows the same sort of like basic structure, you can tell it's like two, like yin and yang style type of thing going on. And I really like that. So they go through the basics and then some like mechanics, and then they go through the walkthrough, the story, how you go through and all that. So, yeah, so this. The Final Fantasy 1 introduced Easy Mode, which I can't remember. Now, can you, when you begin a new game, you have to choose between Easy Mode and Normal Mode. Normal Mode is straight up conversion of the original. Right, okay. So, Easy, easy Mode, um, it's not, I mean, it's, it's not like the GBR PSP version where you can just blitz through it. But they do. it does add some extra extra things to it like so for example you've got the high level cap you can get your level up to level nine you can get your level up to 99 and your spell charges can go up to 99 rather than nine which they could it was only nine in the uh, original one where you've only got characters level up faster everything's cheaper picking the right party now interesting i've never played this game with a monk or a red mage i've played through it a few times but i've never played a monk or a red mage and i really should um yeah. So, yeah, just laying out some basic mechanics of how it works there. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the different... Um, one thing that this game does really well, I think... That I really liked um, that 
games don't really do this much now is especially like with rpgs and um and they kind of after seven it wasn't really made as big of a thing but the whole thing about different um like different things that you can like different vehicles and all that where say like an airship can only land on grass and this thing like the canoe here can go across the shallow water um and the boat can only stop off at ports they did that a few, a few times but um they sort of stopped that a bit later on so we've got some status effects Unlike later games in the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy has a fairly simple battle system. Your characters are each given five choices of which to select one action per round of battle. Yeah. So one, one, two, and three, they don't have the ATB system. You sort of just choose attacks for all your characters and then they'll just go through like in a cycle of... I don't know if it's predetermined or anything. Yeah. And this is... So hold on, so oh yeah, so this is what stats they have at like max, the the magic spells. Like a red mage only has nineteen charge for level eight spells. It would be a um, it would be a red wizard at that point, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, and see, so. Black Mage and White Mage can use each of their own magic types and Red Mage can use a bit of both basically and then when you upgrade them, which I'm sure it'll get to soon, you can sort of, uh, the Black and the White Mage become Black and White Wizards so they can get more of that type, Red can get a more of both and of the three other physical ones, the they get upgrades which like the the warrior can start learning some white magic and the ninja can learn some black magic, but the monk never learns magic. It just gets loads of stats. Oh, and here we have all of the all the different spells. What does I don't know hundred slash fifty. So is that like in easy mode? I don't know. I do find it interesting how. Is like inflicts 10 to 40 fire damage so that actually is like the actual range you know the game actually gives you a range of how much stuff does but yeah there is there's four there's four spells of each color in each tier so there's eight spells per tier but each character can only have three spells per tier total so say if you've got like a white mage you can have three of these four and a black mage can have three of these for and a red mage can just have three of any of them i think there's a bit of well actually it tells you here doesn't it like rm red mage kn for knight white mage white wizard yeah and i got the little images here of the different spells being active they did go a bit i, I noticed like with these newer i say newer this is 2003 but with this version they really did go all out on the animation so for example null fire it they bring up this big blue barrier and it has like it that forms fireballs heading towards them and then um, disintegrating before it hits them to say like look they've got resistance to fire oh yeah heal heal is not really a spell that they they didn't really carry that over in any further games did they like you know you've got cure and then you've got heal which heals like the party they didn't really carry that over and of course, like these null ones, I don't think they had those back until Final Fantasy X. Yeah. Uh, deer, I think, is unique to one as well. Warp. Warp 1. Warp 1. There's Warp 2. Heal 2. Fire 3. There's got to be a Warp 2. Yeah, so Warp 2 warps them out of dungeons completely. Stun, Reaper, that's like death. Q, 
Cure 4. How many... How many Final Fantasy games actually go to the fourth tier of Cure? There's one. And then I remember Final Fantasy 4 had it, because that really, like... was amazing. It's like, oh, wow, there's a Cure 4. And then I don't think any of them did until 12 had Cure Roger and 13 had Cure Roger. And I think... I think that was it. So it is nice to, like... Every so often, them to say like, right, well, here's something from the first game, and it's back again, or something like that. Yeah, the, this game basically had a bunch of um, like stuff that was just like, yep, kill. And we have all the, all the things with all the costs. A lot of the items that you found in this game were very expensive when you first got to the town, that you could buy it from. Part of the game was like grinding up enough gold so that you could then afford like the new sword or whatever for your warrior. Yeah, and some more items. Yeah, so see sleeping bag, tent, cottage that allows you to save for what's on the world, world map. Because you couldn't do that normally. You had to see the save at a, at a ch was it a church? Oh no, an inn, you have to rest at an inn. You actually have to like sleep. So see, so some games like have save points heal you. This game sort of did that same thing, but in a way where it's like, you have to say, you ha you can only save by the things that would normally heal you. You get what I mean? There's some more just explanation of stats there. And Class changes, yeah. Also, yeah, so this is uh, them going into uh, yeah, so these are the classes. So this is like warrior and then it becomes a knight and once they become a knight, these are the the spells they can learn. The white, the white magic spells and there's a few more bits of equipment there that they can equip and all the stats at each level up. And there's some more thief can get some more black magic when it comes to ninja, monk. I mean, look at look at monk. It's like <laughs> monk dupe, monk. It's hardly anything. It's just monks. Monks are just powerhouses. They just do a lot of damage. Like look at this. What does what does the monk get from a class change? A shiny new sprite. Same monk, new package. I don't actually know if it gets any like higher stats or anything. I think I seem to recall that a master, when it's up, it's upgraded to a master, can do a lot of damage through being unarmed. I think. I'm not sure. And so then we got the mages that go into the wizards, so they can expand there. Let's go to the red wizard. Yeah, as you can see, the red wizard is like little, just little bits here and there. So a red, uh, yeah, they can't learn. The red wizard can never learn any level level eight magic by the looks of it. But yeah, see, they gain access like blink, for example, like level one blink, blinks level one spell, and red mage can't learn it, but a red wizard can, even though it's only level one. White mage, black mage. And then we have the story, chapter one. Uh, I wonder if it's going to show us the world map. So yeah, you've got all like, these towns, like little shops and and the inns and all that. And every time you go to, basically every time you go to a new town, it's, what was like, I always found quite appealing about like these older uh, RPGs is sometimes when you go to a new town, it was a big deal because there was new shops. It's like, right, now is the time I can look at the new things that I can get. Yeah. And uh, maps of the castle. So yeah, you've got the, like for example, the nitro powder there, you need the mystic key in order to get in. So yeah, it's quite, I like, it is quite nicely laid out this, this guide. No complaints. Garland, so you've got your first boss. There's the cutscene with the dragon. 
chapter two. The game doesn't really divide into chapters, they sort of just self-determine this, I guess. So yeah, you go to Provoker, then you can go to, then you get the boat, you can go to Elfheim. Once you've defeated the pirates. Yeah, so there's Provoker, where you can defeat the nine pirates. Just so, yeah, there they are, the pirates. And then you can get the boat and you can go to Elfheim. See, this is what I'm talking about with the vehicle thing. Like, So, at this point in the game, you get a boat early on and a boat can stop off, stop off at a shore. But you're still confined within a... Um, like your the, the patch of water that you're in it's more like a lake it's it's landlocked so you can't go too far at least yet with it so what is this this is the oh that's elfheim the castle at elfheim yeah there's the western keep so that's where you go and find astos and there's the cave below the marsh cave so is this where you get the, this is where you get the crown. Yeah, so you get the crown. So you just go back. So it's quite amazed this. So you start like there and you've got to you've really got to like find your way around and there's lots of different items to find. And like if you're in here and you can't get out then you're stuck. You've got to just once you're in here you've got to get out. Um and that's actually a challenge. You know, rather than like once you're in there, it's not you'll it'll reload the file. So if you save if you use a tent outside, it'll take you outside. But you've got to go in and and maybe you'll grab a few things and run out, depending on how you're doing, I guess. There's the enemies, the Pisco demons. Um, they protect the chest. Yeah, the chest with the is it the uh with the crown? Yeah. Old places, new doors. I keep splicing in these random bits of art in here. Alright. Mount Mount Durga. So yeah, this is where so at this point you can break out and go and take the ship to the outer world in which like you can explore much more of the map there, but there's still not many places you can go because um for one, it's quite hard, but also in the northern hemisphere, there's no parts. So it um at least I think that's the case. At the northern half of the map there's no parts at all, so you can't actually go anywhere there. So it's 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 a it's an interesting way and I th I really like how they um they do that where it's like they still like restrict you to like, okay, this part of the game is clearly for later on, this isn't for now. But also Here's your thing where you've got more freedom to move around to different places and stuff and you have to go out and discover Melmond. There's no item shop in Melmond, I remember. Does it actually say here? No. Is it no item shop or no inn? No, there's an inn, but there's no item shop. So run downtown. Yeah, and you've got more caves. I'm just sort of going to blitz through this, I guess. Terra Cavern. Oh yeah, so you have to go back in there. So you go in there to defeat the vampire, then you have to go back in there to defeat Lich, which is the first of the four elemental fiends. And uh, we could really do with the map. Um, I don't know if this is going to show me a map, but yeah. So once you've done that, because you have to like, like free the four crystals or whatever, or like activate them. Um. And so the second one, you don't have to do a second, but the second one on the list, Mount Golg, is in the southeast. And you can get there by, um, yeah, you can get there by boat, yeah. And if you can get into Crescent Lake, Crescent, the, the Crescent Town, you can talk to one of the, uh, Lucan or whatever, one of the sages, and it'll give you the canoe that will allow you to travel along the shallow waters. Crescent Lake, aha, uh -huh, yeah. So, that guy there. Uh, there's the other guy who looks a bit different, who's wearing a different thing, different clothes. But yeah, so you get more, more items and more, 
more stuff. It's nice to see. Yeah, Mount Golg. This is where you get a, a interesting choice of shape there. But this is where you go and defeat uh, Malareth. And yeah, the lava does hurt you as you walk across it. Oh yeah, some of these, I mean, this was quite a nightmare because some of these like, that have all these like empty rooms out in the distance and some of them would be like paths where you get a battle every step. Oh, and cockatrices would paralyze you. Yeah, then the ice, you can go to the ice cave. You go to the ice cavern and then you get the, the levitating stone that will allow you to get the, um, you know, to defeat the evil eye. It will allow you to get the airship. Yeah, but there we are getting the, 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 the lever stone. You have to get the, the airship there. Citadel of Trials. Yeah. So the airship can land on grass, but I don't think it can land on any other surface. So you've got to... Um, sometimes you've got to park like quite far away from your destination. But it will allow you to travel much more in like... like into the northern hemisphere, like there's the continents, the northern continents. It will allow... Like, again, you get a new, like, a new vehicle and it's like, right... Here's new places open up to you, but still you can't go absolutely everywhere. You've got to explore, you've got to find out for yourself. So there's little trials where you, there's all the teleporters. And uh, once you've done that, you can you can go to Bahamut and he'll upgrade you into the yeah class change time. The town of Gaia, yeah, that's that's. I think that's town. Gaia is pretty much like the first. Oh, hold on, town of Gaia is that? Oh, is that the heading for the next? Oh, I don't know. Where am I? Yeah. Yeah. So I think Gaia is one of the first places you'd like in you'd be inclined to go to just because it's a town just in its own little enclaved area you can get the stuff for the um what's it called to go into water no you get that for you get the underwater thing from no you need a bottle don't you from there's a guy who lives in the caravan outside on rack where is it yeah the town uh, on lack all right i guess it's called on lack in this version but there's a guy in the tent he'll sell you the oxiel that's it the town of on yeah and oh look at this more dungeons watery dungeons and kraken yeah and lufenia is lufenia is interesting because you you need to pack the airship a long yeah like a long way away and you need to do a long distance walk to get there and when, when you get there they all speak their own like language but you have to um you have to um get something from dr une like a translating thing there's this part of the game See, this I find interesting because it takes, you got to park far away and you got to walk a long distance to get to a town where people won't speak English or whatever language your version of the game is in. They'll speak their own language and there's no, like, there's no inn, there's no sanctuary to revive or anything like that. But there is a hidden spell shop in the distance that, spell, that sells two spells so like two level eight spells so this is an example i think of something where it's like um you do a lot of work to get to a place that's on the surface not that great all in all but 
there are there's something there um and i really like that i like that like you know hidden stuff tower of mirage yeah this is this is where you fight the final one of the things yeah and this is where this is i believe is where you fight the war mech see in the original version of this game um this it was all space themed Yeah, wall Mac. Save your game now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like the most powerful enemy in the game, I think, that's got a, a low encounter rate. Tiamat. And then you go back to the Temple of Chaos and you gotta oh you gotta go up and fight all the fiends again. Whoa. It's that thing, and then you gotta defeat Chaos at the end of it. And um yeah, you have mini games, and you have a little beastry. I don't know. Oh, the, so the red ones here are bosses, and the blue ones are just enemies. Just a bit of information. Do they have? Do enemies drop things? I don't know. See, ideally, I think. If these images were just like the sprites rather than the like like a part of a screenshot that would look a bit better but fine whatever yeah oh oh and then we go straight into pink final fantasy 2 unique systems before getting into the details like the controls of the game the menu it's good to have a grasp of some of the more unique features of the game. This provides a basic idea of what some of the commands will do for you later in, in later sections. Yeah, and as you can, I mean, this is basically like just a straight up scan of the physical book. But I really do like having these things, like having the PDFs. I'm not into like physical items, so like in general, so. Being able to download PDFs, I really enjoy it. So, yeah. So, Final Fantasy 2 is weird. Also, shame Final Fantasy 1 didn't give us a map. That would have been nice. Final Fantasy 2, I don't think it's going to give us a map either, but it would be nice. So, yeah, you actually, in this game, you, you memorise keywords and you have to go and talk to other NPCs and say the things to them. Um... So yeah, yeah. So this game has a very limited inventory space, sixty-three items you can hold, and that includes key items that once you have, you can't get rid of, like story-based items. So it gets lower and lower as the time goes on. Um, yeah. And then magic. See, so you learn magic through tomes, and so the more you use a spell, the more powerful it gets. And once you give a character a tom, it will give them that spell at level one out of sixteen. It can max. It maxes out at level sixteen. Um, or during a battle, you can use up the tom as an item, and it will use the level eight version of the spell, and you'll lose the tom. So that's uh. I, I like I think that is quite interesting. And you got equipment. Yeah, so like each character has like a left handed like a left hand or a right hand. Um but some like some characters are left handed, so you have to know to give like a character who is left handed like their weapon in their left hand and they'll gain more proficiency with that. And they will just they will gain more proficiency with the weapon type that they use a lot. It is a very strange system and very a controversial and very ahead of its time in a way. So yeah, see these like pages where it's just like text, I always find I don't like them. I find I mean it's a bit better that they've got like some sort of like table layout here. In the status config, yeah, just 
Um, configures um, just settings and all that. See the memo. F I was just looking at this. The memo file. So if you get a notice about saving your progress during a long dungeon, there is one trick you can use, although it's not perfect. Save your current location in a memo file. Cast the warp. Cast warp. Warp hurts you in this game, I remember. Um, if the dungeon permits the use of that spell, once outside, save your progress in a normal save file. Then press R1L. Uh, a lot of, some games did this. I don't know where it originated from, but it was something that I sort of like learned, like, uh, like all the back buttons that I select at the same time would like take you back to the title screen. Like a soft reset. Load a memo file to return to your previous spot in the dungeon. This is not perfect as a permanent save file. It's not returning to your current location in the dungeon. It allows you to save your character's improvements and any items that you looted from chests, making any return trip shorter and safer. See, I wasn't... I didn't think it worked that way. I thought it was... Oh, well, that... Oh, well... Maybe, maybe I knew that and I just forgot, but I was thinking it was sort of like, uh, once you've loaded it up. You know, it is like a, once you load it up and it's gone, but at the same time, it's sort of like, uh, like you can't. Oh, I don't know. Or maybe, maybe, I don't know, but you can load a separate non-memo file, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, modes of transportation in this game. Actually, the th see, thing with Final Fantasy 2 is much different to Final Fantasy 1 is that you can actually go pretty much everywhere from the start. Um, it's just a case of how hard it's going to be because um, if you want to get to, like there's one town early on that you need the canoe to cross over but if you don't have the canoe, you need to basically walk around the world to get there, which means fighting very, very hard enemies. Right. Enemy formation. Yeah, so the enemies have like front and back rows in this game. And in your case, it's sort of like the front row is like your first line of attack so they'll be hit first and when they're all dead then the back ones will be hit i think that's how it works okay and then some information all in status effects and all that now i'm not keen on this this bright pink in general but I, like i said I, I am i do like how it contrasts the the blue of the far fancy one Yeah, and they have start. So yeah, characters have like starting stats. You have other characters. Yeah, and then all your weapons because you know like any character can equip any weapon. It's just a case of what they can become good at. And then you have all the all the items. As you can see, like elixir, I think you can buy. I might be mistaken. I think you can buy elixirs really early on, but they are mega expensive. If family is a dash, it then spirit hasn't. Okay, so yeah, there's the price of the scroll, and then family is like, uh, I think that's like white or black magic which in this game the only uh, significance of that is how um, like what stat governs how good it is yeah I have all the key items there and we have all the all the stuff. Uh, so okay, so some of them are blank, so I don't know how that works. Family paralyze. What? Spirit. I don't know. 
but say, um, where is it? Metamorph. I thought it might be the next page. But um, like Basuna removes temporary status effects. That's that's don't think that's appeared in the series again. As soon as removes permanent status effects. Interesting that this game makes a distinction between the two, in terms of healing it. Um. So yeah, and they've got the different effects for like level up. So. Like usually it's like increased chance or increased power. I think for like warp it doesn't hurt you as much if I can find it. Yeah, ultimate great amount of damage inflicted per cast. Now, <clears throat> oh man, I need to drink. If I remember correctly, Ultima, the power of Ultima, um, does more damage if that character has lots of high level spells, so like the total level of all their other spells contributes to the effect of Ultima. I don't know if that's right. I mean, Effect, like some of them, revives a character from chaos status, okay. Boost magic defense, okay. The wrath of ancients, the most powerful spell, damage the opponent with holy energy. That, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything at all. Oh, so now we're going to the, the black magic. Because, yeah, um... Ultima is a white magic, which is weird, isn't it? Now we're going to the black magic. Aura, black magic, boost against various four attack. All right. Let's see what bizarre ones we've got. I think these ones here are mostly just normal ones. Oh, anyway, we've got the the story here. I won't go through much of this. We've got Alt Altair. Um, yeah, just going through a lot of the things I'm going through. Katreya, that's on your way to Finn. I remember that. Uh, there's Finn. Don't talk to the guards because they'll, they'll kill you. The world map. You're not actually going to see it though, are we? The Mystic Awe. So this is where you go to Salamand. Oh, what's, is it called Salamand in this game? In this version? Yeah, it is Salamand. I didn't really like the translation with some of the names in this one. So, like, Guy is called Gus. And uh, Minwu is called Mindu. But, yeah. So, as you see here, we've got, like, the canoe. So, that will get you from... Altair to Poft, I think, just across the river, across the lake. But yeah, you get Mindu and or Minwu, and it's like, oh wow, he's got all this, all this white magic. Poft, yeah, and then you can hire an airship to get to Paloom with Sid, but it's not until much later in the game that you actually get your own airship. I think it's Paloom. Or is it an airship or is it a boat? Salamand. Yeah, the snow place, Semit Falls. That's where you take Joseph. Oh no, you go there with Minwu first. Right. The sergeant. Then go to the dreadnought. Yeah, it's very much a case of um, there's the world is very open, but there's lots of stuff in the way, like lots of big hard enemies. So 
you can like buy like a ticket to go take an airship ride or a boat ride to go to places or you could walk which is much more dangerous or you could just not go there until the story permits it but you can go to like most places from the start it's just very very hard into the airship so is this oh no this is the dreadnought yeah yeah one thing this game does a lot of is the um empty rooms <laughs> so like you go into a room and then there's nothing there and then it takes like four steps to get out and each of them will be a battle or something yeah so then you get joseph and this is when you go to the snow caves Castle Cassian. You get Gordon. Shriek, that boss gave me a lot of trouble first time because it resists a lot of things. Uh, but in other words, we have with a simple solution. The main goal is to survive past the fourth round, outlasting the Shrieker's MP. Also, you just got to survive, I guess. Okay. Back to the battleship. The hiding place. Yep, the dreadnought. Okay. So this is just... I mean, there's a few... Like mention, there's a few like mentions of enemies, but there's not really much going on because a lot of the, a lot of the mechanics are sort of like baked into the system itself. So, um, it will like introduce you to like new, new things as you go. Ah, see, look, out of order. While your quest leads directly to Deist or Deist, however you want to pronounce that. <coughs> Matters are not suppressing that you cannot take time to explore one. One place you, you may want to note is a strange tropical island located to your south. Yeah, you can get the black mask and the white mask. Um, which you don't need till later, but I remember I got them earlier than you need to. So it's like you can get them earlier and then later on it's like, oh, I need the white mask for something. And then you go, oh, here it is. Like, oh, thank you. Castle of Dragons. Okay. Deist Cavern. My my knowledge of Final Fantasy... I mean, I have completed Final Fantasy 2. Um, but my knowledge of the world, like the way it's laid out, isn't as much as it is with the first one. Live in the Arena. Yeah. Palamecia Desert. Colosseum, yep. Yeah. I do remember the Colosseum. And I think this is soon. There's like the whole thing, Le Leviathan, Cuttlefin. Yeah, and then you have to go into Leviathan soon, I think. Or there's like a typhoon. I forget. Gotos. Yeah, I just I, I always find these things a bit weird where it's like, oh, at this point in your at this point your inventory is probably becoming as crowded as your spell list. Um I don't know. Might have been in that position long before. Yeah, but there is something like inventory management, so it's like, you know, if you've got something there that you don't need, that's not going to be useful to it, you just get rid of it if you don't need to. If you don't, if you, if you think you might come, if you might come across something better, I guess. Ah, see, white mask. The masks. The goddess shrine, tropical island. Oh, is this where you find the doppelganger? There's a doppelganger, isn't there? And you get the black black masks there. I don't know. Island Paradise. The 
Key to the tower. Mycidian cave. Oh no, this is where... This is where the... The doppelganger is, I think. Uh, double trouble. Yeah. There you are. The belly of the beast. Yeah, so this is where you see Ricard. Or in this game, he's called Gareth. For some reason. In this version. Um, oh yeah, the tower with all the different elements. Lots of enemies. Yeah, it's basically some tips like saying like, oh, a sooner because of everlasting status effects, or whatever they're called, permanent ones. Ice Gigas, Thunder Gigas, yeah, White Dragon. Eye of the storm, so yeah, now you're going to the tower. And uh Yeah, the Cyclone. Green Dragon. The Emperor fight, and this is where you get Leon back, I believe. Your new transportation can be found at the ruins of Poft where Sid once ran his transport service. Locate it by checking the world map. So is this you getting a an airship for good now? Castle of Palamecia. Hurt to heal. Uh, the healing staff. A passage to Pandemonium. This is the, the the Jade passage. Yeah, yeah. This is where we're approaching the final boss now. The final battle. Yeah. Look at this maze. This is Pandemonium. Yeah, lots of lots of bosses in the final dungeon as as it is. You fight the final boss, and now we have the the beastery. So enemies don't give experience, um, but there is sort of like a rank to them in a way. In that they have some value. I don't know exactly what it is. Decount. What's hold on? Let's go back. What's decount? Uh, attack number. A count number of strikes. No, I don't know what the de decount is. Decount. Yeah. Oh, defense count. Oh, defense count. Oh, never mind. It's nothing to do with that. But I think there's like um. Uh. A value of um, what's it called? Like like a rank to them, where it's not it's not experience, but it sort of determines how much like stats you can gain from them. I think I don't know exactly, um. But look, I don't okay. I, I don't like this formatting because for one. These colours aren't so clear. And second of all, Astroth here requires an extra line in ability, so the thing's pushed down a bit, so it's a bit out of out of whack. Yep, look at all these enemies. Chocobo Forest, after the ending. <laughs> Once you defeat a Final Fantasy 2, don't be too quick to turn off that console. You can still explore the world even after the quits unfold. Even better, you can save your completed data and unlock a new gameplay mode as well. It's important. Any collection data into a new game. A new gameplay mode? I don't remember that. Oh, is that the... Uh, hold on. New save our max with a star, or this as usual. More options for starting a new game. Yeah, it unlocks... Ah, okay, yeah. So it unlocks the normal mode. So it has all of the... Um, things from the original, like... No auto-targeting or anything like that, I think. I don't know. Oh, concentration. You can play concentration. I've always wanted to play concentration. And we have the credits. And then Unlimited Saga come in 2003. And it was bad. Yeah, and there we have the back. And that's it.
So, um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I just thought it might be interesting. I mean, maybe the audio's all messed up and I've just wasted 50 minutes of my time. But otherwise, this has been all right. Just taking a quick glance through. Um, the strategy guide of, of uh, Final Fantasy Origins. So you can see even in the logo, the, they've got the blue, or the bot line at the bottom, they've got the blue fading into the pink. <sighs> yeah. Very, I mean, not, I mean, these games, I put them both in my top two, in my top 100 games. Final Fantasy 2 was like maybe 60 or 70 something, and Final Fantasy 1 was maybe, oh, 30 or 40 or something, I don't know. I don't know, I can't remember, but that was a long time ago. That was like seven years ago I made that list. Um, and yeah, so this is just me going through the this particular version and reliving some memories of 2003. Yeah, wasn't a great year, 2003, if I'm honest. Um, I very much remember the summer of 2003 sitting on my bedroom floor um, playing Final Fantasy 2 drinking lemonade out of a coca-cola glass and just having a load of those little cocktail sausages just loads of them I was really obsessed with them and I was grinding a lot and listening to Against the Grain by Bad Religion because I just discovered the, the suck because I just discovered it and even though at the time I was kind of like I don't know I, it's just I chose to do that, but looking back at it now, it just feels like how dull of a memory. <laughs> just sat on the floor eating cocktail sausages, playing Final Fantasy Two, listening to Against the Grain. I mean, you know, Final Fantasy Two is a good game. Cock I enjoyed the cocktail sausages. Bad Religion's a brilliant band. You know, my favorite band, Against the Grain. I really enjoy that song, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.